Welcome to the third and final episode in a Legendarium series about real mad scientists. In this episode, we will talk about the life of Edward Kelly, a close friend and confidant of John Dee, magician to Queen Elizabeth. For a figure who achieved such infamy, we know very little about Edward Kelly's life. He claimed descent from the Humane family in Ireland, and later in life John Dee drew up a horoscope which placed Kelly's birthday as August 1st, 1555. Kelly knew some Greek and Latin, so he almost certainly received an education. Some reports claim that at the age of 17 he attended Oxford University, but this is impossible to know for certain. Some accounts also claim that the authorities placed him in the pillory for forgery and cut off his ears as punishment. Kelly became noted for wearing a skull cap that would have partly covered his ears. Around March 1582, when he would have been about 27 years old, Edward Kelly approached John Dee, the personal astrologer too and pet magician of Queen Elizabeth I of England. Dee used scrying to communicate with the angels. Scrying is the act of deriving prophecies or secret wisdom from objects like mirrors or crystal balls. People took such craft seriously back then. Almost every parish boasted a cunning man who, for the price of a beer or a bed, would summon spirits or tell fortunes. The angels, supposedly, advised Ian in spiritual matters and opened his eyes to secret scientific or occult knowledge. However, the angels that Dee supposedly spoke with never helped him achieve his ultimate goal, reunifying the Catholic and Protestant churches. Upon approaching John Dee, Edward Kelly convinced the academic and alchemist of his ability to communicate with angels. He likely did so through a talent for ventriloquism. The two men called the language used by various angels, including Uriel and Michael, Enochian. The two men believed these to be the pure words that God spoke to Adam before the fall of humankind. Dee sought to decode the entire Enochian language and capture the wisdom of the angels in a book that would elevate humankind, making poverty and disease vanish. Dee confirmed in his diaries that in all their sessions together, only Kelly saw or communicated with the spirits that Dee believed they contacted. Many historians believe that the charlatan Kelly suckered Dee into his schemes. Indeed, early in their relationship, Edward Kelly informed Dee that the angels wanted them to swap wives. Dee would take Kelly's wife Joanna, and Kelly would take John's wife Jane. Though Dee became distraught that the angels suggested such a thing, he allegedly went through with this strange union. John Dee and Jane had eight children together, but Edward Kelly likely fathered one of their sons, Theodore. Dee and Kelly then visited Poland and Bohemia beginning in 1583, giving displays of magic at the courts of princes. Albert Lasky, a Polish aristocrat and dabbler in the occult, financed their early voyages. After four years of traveling Central and Eastern Europe, the two men arrived in Prague. Despite the Emperor Rudolf's preoccupation with alchemy, it was a city ruled by fervent Counter-Reformation churchmen who viewed magic makers with suspicion at best and hostility at worst. Dee acquitted himself well in an interview with Bishop Malaspina, professing himself a pious man who would not cause religious discord in Prague or traffic in the black arts. By contrast, Kelly openly declared his support for the Reformation and urged the destruction of the Catholic Church before a bishop. 
The bishop remained calm, but ordered the two men out of the city, unsurprisingly. Kelly kept them in by claiming that angels taught him to build a crucible. A user simply placed any available metal into the crucible along with a red mystery powder that he had discovered. Afterwards, they heated it, stirred it, and the device supposedly produced pure gold. Because people at the time considered gold to be the perfect metal, they also believed that any device which could turn metal into gold could also perfect people, restoring them to the innocence and immortality of the Garden of Eden. Kelly played the magic-obsessed Emperor Rudolph II like a fiddle. He won land and title, styling himself the Baron of Bohemia for his supposed golden touch. On the other hand, his old partner D ran short of cash and returned home to England in December 1589 to discover that thieves had plundered his library and scientific instruments during his absence. While Kelly lived in Prague, Elizabeth reportedly wrote to him asking for just a bit of the red powder he created so that she could finance her army. Yet Kelly's success in Prague proved as short-lived as any sensible person would expect. In time, the Emperor Rudolf II threw Kelly into prison. Some accounts claim that the emperor punished his pet alchemist for dueling, which was against the law, but in all likelihood, Rudolf grew impatient to see this gold that Kelly kept promising. After months of imprisonment in the medieval castle of Hrod Krivkolat, Kelly received another chance to perform his magic, and he unsurprisingly failed. The emperor sent Kelly back to prison, also unsurprising. According to local lore, Kelly attempted to leap from his window, only to suffer an injury that required the amputation of his leg. Soon after, Kelly supposedly committed suicide to escape his constant pain and newfound helplessness. Kelly's unlikely life inspired the Ben Jonson novel The Alchemist, and supposedly he was one of Alastair Crowley's previous incarnations before Crowley's own infamous life. That wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.